ever since the coronavirus pandemic caused travel restrictions, lockdowns, and economic downturns around the world, it was being expected that this pandemic will give way to a new world order. China is being accused of causing the pandemic by mishandling the COVID-19 outbreak and covering up its severity. The Chinese regime did so with the help of its authoritarian regime, where the voices of doctors and citizen journalists were muzzled. It did so with its deep influence in the WHO, which helped bluff the world. And now it has resorted to acts of aggression in the time of the pandemic, be it in Hong Kong, the South China Sea, or the border with India. Now China is facing serious backlash from every direction and there is an increasing sentiment to hold the CCP regime accountable. Beijing fears a shake-up in the global equations and its fears have come true as Donald Trump has proposed to expand the G7 by inviting Russia, India, South Korea and Australia to join the group of most advanced economies. This is a clear sign of the new world order which is here as the expanded G7 consisting of G7 countries and India, South Korea and Australia. The three countries have reportedly accepted Trump's invitation. The extended group is likely to meet in September to discuss China's future. This comes days after Trump called for the expansion of the quote-unquote very outdated group and said that the meet would now be held in September or November where India, Russia, South Korea and Australia should also be invited. The president had said that countries like India, Australia, South Korea and Russia should also get representation in the grouping and it should be called the G10 or G11, Trump said. I'm postponing it because I don't feel that as a G7 it probably represents what is going on in the world. Only Russia seems unlikely to join the expanded G7 because the suggestion of bringing Russia into the extended fold hasn't gone down well within the group of world's most advanced economies. The UK and Canada have opposed Trump's invite to Russia. Russia was excluded from this group, earlier called the G8, in response to its invasion of Crimea. Moreover, Beijing and Moscow have been showing a sense of camaraderie amidst the ongoing pandemic and it doesn't sound reasonable for Putin to join a group that is clearly aimed against China. However, in the case of a triangular world order where the US, Russia and China form the three different poles, anything is possible. Above this, earlier it was reported that the UK was planning to propose a D10 alliance of 10 democracies including India to counter Chinese CCP-backed 5G giant Huawei. The prospect of an expanded G7 coming together has riled up China and Beijing has been castigating countries on this latest development. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Cho Lijian has said, China believes all international organizations and conferences should be conducive to mutual trust between countries, to upholding multilateralism, promoting world peace and development. He added that, We believe this is a role of the overwhelming majority of the countries in the world. Any attempt to seek a small circle against China is doomed to fail and is unpopular. Clearly, the expansion of the G7 with an eye on Beijing hasn't gone down well with China. China knows that this group of high-income countries can hurt it like never before. These countries can easily use their economic prowess to keep China out of the supply chains and harass its exports-based economy. Moreover, within the G10 or the expanded G7, smaller groupings like the Quad consisting of India, Japan, Australia and the United States could come together to further bolster their Indo-Pacific strategy of isolating China in the strategically crucial maritime region. All countries in the expanded G7 except India are high-income, developed economies. But that doesn't in any way mean that New Delhi's role will get undermined. In fact, the whole strategy to reduce dependence on China and to counter its expansionism is centered around India. Trump has included India within the expanded G7, keeping in mind that the country would play a big role in replacing China as a premier investment destination and a manufacturing hub for the companies based in the developed world. India may be a developing economy, but it is at the center of this expanded intergovernmental economic organization's strategy to uproot China's hegemony and welcome a new 
post-coronavirus world order in which China's role will get watered down drastically.